Well, hello, YouTubers. <clears throat> I've been asked about, uh, hey, how do you make those nozzles for phasers on a lathe, or how do you make parts on a lathe? And uh, I wanted to show you what a typical hobby lathe looks like. Someone asked me about a Harbor Freight lathe, and I went, ah, don't do that. Um, this is a Grizzly lathe. This is like $8.99, 100 bucks for freight. 50 bucks to bring it inside and some sales tags and by the time you're done I think it's a little over a thousand bucks um, it's a decent ISO 9000 certified lathe now the lathe comes with a three inch chuck that doesn't have good tolerance so you sell that on Craigslist right away what you're looking at right now is a four inch self-centering high precision chuck um, you really need that for like a type 2 phaser nozzle because that thing's 16 sided and 16 does not divide by 3 properly. You can't grip it. So you got to have a four, a 4 jaw. Also, I have a 4 jaw independent because when I make the laser nozzles, a lot of, of the time they are not uh, perfectly concentric. If I can't get them centered, I can't do um, a knockdown on the neural, which you need to do. And um, so I put the 4 jaw independent, which we're going to see in a minute. Um, panning over here a little bit you'll see that there's all kinds of tools and you're probably like what the hell are all those tools and this is all a good question and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here see if the camera cooperates well, it looks like it's gonna dun, 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 dun. okay there there we go we'll get in real tight there Ooh, look at that there's tools okay what you're seeing here is we've got three drill chucks that go in the tailstock that's the end opposite the chuck on the lathe. The one with the stripes on it is super high precision. The other two are regular precision, which is still very high precision, but I use primarily for, for example, the one closest has a funny looking drill bit in it. That's called a centering drill. The one in the middle has a plastic drill bit that I use when I lathe um, acrylic. And again, the one on the far side is my super high precision. All these little black things here, and I'll grab one of these and show it to you, that. That's, that's a lathe tool and it has a carbide tip bit in it. It's indexable. That means I can spin it around. Those all fit in to that thing that says A2Z CNC on it. That is a tool post with a quick change mechanism. Quick change means I can do this. Voila! And I put it back in. And it locks in place. Why do I care? a standard tool post that comes with any lathe you've got to take a wrench and put every bit in and out recenter it on the workpiece and then use it and then when you want to do a different cut like a facing say you want to do left facing right facing and you want to cut a groove or do a cutoff every time you do something you gotta reinsert and recenter the tool that process can take 15 to 20 minutes for every tool it'll drive you mad okay now the downside of this, the, uh, the index, indexable quick change tools are the holder and the carbide bit with the index piece on it that whole assembly is about ah, 115 bucks in total and I've only got about a half a dozen or a dozen of them out where you can see them in total I've got about two dozen of those things so you do the math real quick and you go well that's twice as much money as the lathe and the answer is yes it is and that's kind of what I'm getting at too. The tools for the machine are always a lot more than the machine. So if you're going to invest in a lathe, you invest in a good lathe and over time you build up a great set of tools. And you can see, I'm going to zoom back out, look at all the crap that is above my lathe and next to my lathe. Those are all lathe tools. And if you look down below my lathe, the wooden boxes and stuff, I've got multiple micrometers, knurling tools to put the knurling both straight and diamond, you name it, I got it. I got metric drill bits that are short, those are called machinists drill bits. They're like 200 bucks a set. Um, I got metric, I got English, I got taps, I got drills, I got dies. It's a pretty long list of stuff. So anyway, that's a little introduction to um, a lathe. And this is not a huge lathe because I don't need one. This is a 7 inch by 12 inch. A mini model. All right, this next piece of equipment is a bench top mill. This is a small mill. This is about, oh, I don't know, 1100 bucks for the machine. But again, 
the tools cost way more than the machine sitting on that uh, benchtop mill at an angle that is called a sign vise it's a tool maker sign vise I don't know that thing was probably like 250 bucks because it's a decent one um, the thing holding it to the mill those are called clamps you need to to have a set of clamps as well as make a bunch of clamps that all costs money um, and then you're going to need to make some tools to do specific jobs and I'll just pan over here and you'll notice there's a brass bar right there that says top on it um, that's it right here that brass bar holds three rectangular heat sinks that I make for P1s which are these things see but to hold a part and machine it you gotta think all that stuff through and sometimes you gotta make your own tools and fixtures and that takes time and money now again here in the background you gotta notice and I'll zoom in on this dum to dum dum to dum to dum to dum to dum to dum to dum there we're there it is oops is it a little out of focus? Nah, it's good okay this is another tool maker's vise it's just not a one that angles it's just a straight flat and sometimes I use that instead of the angular one because I get more clearance in, in my head height on my lathe uh, you know on my milling machine so anyway you got vices in the machine and clamps and it just goes on and on and on and on and on so that you can use the thing to get some work done this particular milling machine happens to be a horizontal or vertical meaning that uh, right now it's set up as an end mill uh, it can also be set up so that uh, there's a shaft that comes out of uh, right about, let me point to it. There's a shaft that can come out here if I take that plastic plug off and I move the motor to the back and then the shaft comes out and there's a bearing here that mounts on this and I can do things like cut gears and stuff like that. So this machine I bought because it's a horizontal and vertical and it gives me versatility to do prop stuff. Um, if you have space, you can always buy a horizontal and a vertical. Buy two. What the hell, right? Ah, uh, what are those? Good question. Those are collets, and those fit in the mill. And those hold all different size tools, um, end mills, drill bits, and so forth. And that, again, gives me more precision. And there you can see one of those super high precision um, drill chucks and that is dedicated to the end mill because it takes a different shank size than the um, the lathe so I've got a total of um, four drill chucks and three different kinds of um, shanks on them R8s and Morse tape of twos and on and on and on to learn all this stuff you'll have to get yourself a machinist handbook that's gonna cost another 300 bucks okay okay <clears throat> Getting back to the end of this video um, and talking about nozzles, uh, this is a phaser nozzle. This happens to be a mid-grade that does not have the spinning ring on it. Put that back here. This is what's called round aluminum billet. That's what you start with to make a nozzle. This is an in-process example of uh, a nozzle and when you hold these up next to each other you can sort of see how one becomes the other okay now one of the things you have to do after you put the knurling on here which is done with a knurling rig which I didn't bother to get out of the box because it's a pain in the twist and it's greasy you gotta take your end mill and you have to mill these little flat spots eight of them evenly around the knurls um, to do that put that there what the heck we'll put that there to do that you need this gizmo um, this is an indexing table a rotary table and it comes with a tailstock and you mount the rotary table and the tailstock on the mill bit and that allows you to turn this part around and get these things spaced exactly right this happens to be a reject because I missed and didn't get exactly five neurals exposed and uh, we all know we've got to have exactly five five flats on, on those nozzles. Um, this is your four jaw independent chuck that I talked about. When these parts, being these parts, sometimes you don't get the distance between the two flats exact, you can't put them on the self-centering chuck 
I'm, uh, yeah, the four and self-centering that we saw on the lake. So you gotta break up this puppy, switch them out. Then you gotta use this gizmo, look at that, and dial it in. And dialing it in means getting it concentric in the chuck, typically within one ten thousandth of an inch um, on the diameter. It's preferable, so we use this gizmo on the lathe to dial it in. This also comes in handy on the milling machine, but I won't get into that. So anyway, that's sort of a quick look. Um, also on the lathe, you know, you need to learn how to make your own tools because like to put the little radius on the front edge of these nozzles, you need a form tool. And you gotta, you gotta make your own on a grinder. And you have to have the right relief angles and rake angles and everything else on your tool. The machinist handbook explains how to do that. Um, these are more carbide tip tools. These are the ones primarily that are used to make nozzles. Um, this I use to knock down the knurls. This guy's for grooves and cutoffs. And this, although it appears to face to the left, is actually a right hand turning tool. And the reason for that is you're facing or cutting the right end of the, the work. So rights look like le lefts and lefts look like rights. Anyway, you'll learn all that if you um, well, go to community college and take a course in machining, which I do recommend because if you don't know what you're doing and you make an attempt to machine some things, there is the possibility, and I'm zooming in on these nozzles, those are 20 nozzles uh, that just were completed. Um, the machines do have enough torque and power where they will rip off a hand or take off a finger pretty instantly uh, so you want to know what you're doing before you play with the machines. Um, moreover, if you feed the tool into the work incorrectly, again, there's a ton of torque. You can snap off that tool or rip that piece of billet out of the chuck really easy. And there's nothing like getting hit in the head with something that weighs three or four pounds that's metal when it's moving at a thousand RPM. Um, it'll hurt, just let's say that. So you need to know for certain that uh, you know how to operate the equipment in a safe fashion before you plug it in and flip it on. Because if you don't, I can guarantee you, you will either get hurt or you're gonna break that piece of equipment. So visit your community college, the, the courses are cheap. Um, don't just think you can watch YouTubes and do this initially. Take one class, get the basics, then go watch YouTube to learn how to do stuff that's more specific. And everybody have a great Memorial Day.